Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents, God's Church of Love Online, every Saturday. Romans chapter 12. And in Romans chapter 12, we are starting at <laughs> verse 3. For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, so we, being many, or one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Let me stop there for a second. I was thinking about that last night. I was thinking about how different ones of us have different expressions of what the Holy Spirit gives us. And the one thing we always have to remember is nobody is to be our clone. Nobody is to be our our uh, replication of of our expression. I'm I'm sounding redundant. Sorry about that. But let's say Jeanette has the gift of singing, and I have a gift of singing, or she has the gift of teaching, and I have the gift of teaching. I may teach in a totally different manner than she does. One is no better than the other. Mine is no better than hers. Hers is no better than mine. You have to look at the expression of the Holy Spirit as a bouquet of roses. They're all roses. They're all from the same source. They're all from the same bush. But one rose is not going to look exactly like the other rose. One rose might be a little lighter in color than the other one. The other one might be a little darker. You might have a, a five or six rose bushes side by side. They're all in the same soil, all being fed by the same nutrients. Same life source is God. But you might have one rose bush that's blue, one that's got red roses, one that's got yellow roses, another with white roses or multicolor. The bottom line is. They're the same. Not one rose is, this rose over here is no better than that rose over there. And a lot of us, unfortunately, forget that when we deal with mankind. <laughs> one is not better than the other. So a lot of times we think more highly of ourselves because if I can do it, why can't you do it? If I do it like this, you ought to do it like that. I was taught to do A, B, C, D, E. Why are you doing A, C, G, F, Q? Why are you doing it like that? Well, okay, let me explain that real quick. People are individuals. We are to mark the perfect man, behold the upright, for the end of that man's way is peace. But our real role model is Jesus Christ. And the one thing I love about Jesus is he allows us. Sometimes we as human beings don't allow that. He allows us to individually, uniquely express what the gift that God has given to us and it is expressed as God flows through us to be a blessing to other people. That gift is going to show itself in many different ways. Why? Because God is a God of variety. One spirit, many expressions. One spirit, many gifts. And we are members one of another. We're part of the vine, which is Christ. But you're going to find some of us are sweeter than others. Just like with grapes, some of us are more sour than others. <laughs> so we have to remember that we are not 
to create replicas of ourselves. We are to allow people to be individuals. That's what makes the world go round. The versatility, the variety, the, the, the uniqueness of every individual. All right, now moving right along. Let's move on to verse seven or ministry. Let us, oh, sorry, verse six. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given unto us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Now, that's another thing we forget. Everybody has different levels of faith. Some have a lot of faith. Some have a, a, a moderate level of faith. Some have little faith, the same way Jesus talks about bearing fruit. Some a hundredfold, some 60-fold, some 30-fold. The bottom line, they're bearing fruit. Everybody's not going to be straight A, straight B, or even C's. But the bottom line is God deals with us individually. Remember that. All right. So here we have the grace given unto us by the proportion of faith. And somebody might be able to prophesy left and right. They're, they're, they're so on it. They're so perfect. And another person might only prophesy once or twice a year because we have to flow as the Holy Spirit flows through us. We can't just jack it up, conjure it up, and work it. No, we've got to wait on the Lord. And when the Lord is ready to use us, that gift will be readily available. We can't manipulate it. Don't try to manipulate now. All right. Remember, this is a gift from God, <laughs> not, not my gift to me. It's God's gift to me. So he will minister through us as he wills and according, uh, in accordance with our faith level. All right. Let's go on to verse seven. All right, let me repeat six. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith or ministry. Let us wait on our ministering or he that teacheth on teaching or he that exhorteth on exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. You know, that's the part we forget. That's the part of the equation that we leave out a lot of times in churches, church service, outreach ministries, ministering one to another, interpersonal relationship with the body of Christ. We oftentimes forget that one element, love. We forget the, the fruits of the Holy Spirit have to be the flavor of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So whatever you do for the Lord, you have to be wrapped up, tied up. It has to be soaked in God's love. It has to be soaked and saturated with mercy, with goodness, with kindness, with patience, with cheerfulness, with long suffering, with understanding. Do you understand what I'm saying? We have to be exemplary uh, examples of God's love, expressions of God's love. Whatever you do for the Lord, if it's not based on love, baby cakes, watch yourself. I, I knew a person years ago who, this is a quick example of what I mean. 
uh, of what to stay away from. Sometimes we as human beings want to be Holy Ghost Jr. Now, what I mean by that is we want to make sure that we don't encourage our brother or sister in the Lord to get the big head. So we may refrain from giving compliments. Listen to that now. Listen, what is the motive behind that? It's very subtle, very subtle. But there are times when we think more highly of ourselves and we think too lowly of someone else. And because we don't want competition or we don't want them to think they're better than I because this is a competition, which is not supposed to be. But that's what we turn it into. So when someone is really excellent at doing something, we will refrain from complimenting them. And we will be forthcoming with the criticisms. You see what I'm saying? And it's a form of being in control of someone else's ego. But see, that's not your job. That's the work of the Holy Ghost. But we oftentimes want to be Holy Ghost Jr. So we will keep their ego in check. Oh, oh you're not going to get the big head around me, baby. I'm going to keep you humble. And that is not the work of the Holy Ghost. That is the work of the flesh. Careful with that one. Very subtle. <laughs> Very subtle. We don't realize we got the big head when we're doing it. We don't realize we're operating out of pride, arrogance, and competition. Be careful with that one. All right. So now we're going to move to Romans chapter 11. It's only one sentence in that. But this is what the Lord led me to. Clear as a bell. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. So you will find, you know, when you look back in your days, when you were a heathen, you will look back and realize that there were some of the gifts operating in you. The gifts of God are without repentance, y'all. You've got the gift. Whether you use it or not, the gift is there. It's readily available when the Holy Spirit wants to use it. Years ago, when I was unsaved, as an example, I was at a restaurant with a friend of mine who was hooking up with a guy. And the Lord gave me a bona fide step-by-step -step vision as if I was watching a video. And I took her outside and warned her. She told her what I saw. Do not get along with this guy. He's very, very sadistic. And he will hurt you, girl, take you close to the door of death. And he will do it repeatedly. Now, to show you how the gifts and callings are without repentance. I was 20, maybe 21. We were at the place called the Right Track in Pasadena. Party and hearty. Went to the restaurant. She's going to hook up with this guy she met at the club. Guy was good looking, tall, fine, dark, and handsome. I mean, he was well-groomed. The brother was tight from head to toe. And he had a nice demeanor. Professionally, he was a cop. So you know he was making some nice ducats. But there was a secret to the brother that nobody knew. Nobody would have expected that from a cop. But the Lord gave me a vision. And I was not saved, y'all. <laughs> that happened as well. Now, okay, let me tell you what happened as a result real quick. Uh, when I shared that with her, I, I begged, I pleaded. I had tears running down my chest. Don't go with this guy. He will hurt you. She confessed to me. Four years ago or so, right around that period, shortly after I, I uploaded that video testimony, she confessed to me that she had totally forgotten what I told her 
and a month or two or three later, they hooked up. And they hooked up at his place. And everything I saw happened. She thought she was going to die that day. You hear me? Thank God the Lord gave her a way of escape. Now, this is what I want to share with you. Also, my sister, who was not saved at the time, I was not saved at the time, but God's call was on my life to get into the kingdom. I just hadn't answered that call yet. I was engaged to this brother who was one of the finest that I had ever hooked up with. Tall, dark, fine. Oh, the man's smile make you melt like butter. And I'm telling you, everything about the brother was fine. You get my drift? All right, we won't go any further with that. I was unsaved, y'all. So yes, I was taking many liberties that I don't take now. Now, what happened was my sister was driving down Lake Avenue. She called me. My dress was being made. We were going to have turquoise and black. I mean, it was going to be a beautiful, colorful wedding, you know. She calls me and says, I, I mentioned the color for a reason. She calls me and says, I had a vision. I said, what? She said, and it was about you. And I said, what? She said, I don't think you're supposed to marry this guy. And I said, really? Why? My mother used to call him the peacock. It was after I broke up with him that I realized why. She saw something I didn't see. He was strutting his stuff. I didn't see that. In this vision, I'm standing in a church. Now check this out. Girlfriend had no plans of getting married in the church. We were going to get married under the under the under the sky with the birds and the bees and the trees and and the sunlight. We were going to be married outside. And the church was not going to have part or parcel in this ceremony. But she saw me standing at an altar. She couldn't tell if it was white or off white but it was a very light color. And she said, I was standing at the altar with a man that did not look anything like this guy. And he and I were matching in color. So what happened? After I got saved, I broke up with him. After I got saved, she saw the wedding. She was at my wedding and I was wearing ivory and the groom was wearing ivory in a church just like she saw it so the gift and callings when when the lord lays it on you it could happen when you're saved or unsaved because see the lord will intervene when he sees you going in the wrong direction he's got his hand on you and the first thing he's got to do is get you into the fold and then after he gets you into the fold he's got to give you your assignments you, you, you know you start uh, getting a feel of your calling you start getting a feel of a heart throb the thing that drives you that motivates you your motive gift and then you start getting the feel of your divine call and he'll give you dreams and he'll give you all kind of uh, inclinations and you start to pick up on the road signs along the way. So keep asking because God has a purpose for you being on this planet. You're not here just to take up space. You're not here just to support your husband's ministry. You're not here just to support your wife's ministry. You've got a call on your life as well. You're not here just to support Brother Appleseed or Sister Appleseed's ministry. You have a calling on your life as well. Seek him for that. And one gift is no better than that gift. That gift over there is no better than this gift over here. Remember, you're looking at a bouquet of roses. They're all roses. So don't get the big head. Don't think of one as being so much higher. Let me share this with you real quick. 
You know how the Bible talks about well, whatever we do, we should do it in cheerfulness and readiness. All right. This man gave a testimony that he was going to go to one last church service and he was he was going to go and commit suicide. He was he was done. He was he was ready to to exit stage left. And uh he goes in to this church. He didn't know the people. The usher, not the preacher. The usher, not the soloist. The usher, not the one that stood up and gave a word of prophecy. The usher welcomed him with the biggest grin, just so full of love, so bubbly, so positive, so welcoming. All in love. It was all from his heart. And anything that means, you know, would you like some water? You're comfortable. Would you like to sit back here? Would you like to sit up closer? Would you like to sit near? Very accommodating. Wanted to make sure everybody was welcome and comfortable wherever they wanted to sit. And he was going to see to it because he had the gift of hospitality and love. So this man is taken aback by the by the the love oozing and flowing from this man. And because of the usher, not the pastor, the usher, not the sermon, the usher, not the choir, not the worship team, the usher. That man got up that night, walked to the altar and gave his heart to the Lord. And his life has never been the same because of the usher operating in his gift. See, the problem with a lot of churches now, you got a lot of people that are operating in gifts that God did not put them in. They're taking up seats, positions, and they are doing jobs and duties that they're not called to do. So they don't have the grace. They're not inundated with the love because they're doing something out of duty. When you are in your gift, when you're in your lane, God can use you mightily. The anointing is flowing, is gushing from you. But when you're not operating in the right gift, when you're out of place, out of sorts, in the wrong lane, doing something someone else was supposed to do, out of ego, the anointing is hindered. The anointing is, 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 is blocked. There's always a little anointing when you serve God, but that anointing is nowhere near as effective. If the wrong person had been doing the ushering that night, having had an attitude because they had to come in and they were expecting to be able to stay home and watch the Lakers, that person would have left that church and accomplished the devil's plan for his demise. He would have committed suicide. But because the right person was in the right place at the right time, with the right spirit and a heart full of love, that man's life has never been the same because of an usher. So don't look at one like it's better than another, baby. Because there are people that you will reach that the pastor will never reach. There are people who will be in the church who will come to that church because of somebody that's over on the side that's not singing. They're not playing the piano. They're not preaching a sermon. But there's something about that person. That's what happened to me. There was a family called the Hall family. And yes, Pastor Cushman's preaching was anointed, baby. Drew tears to my eyes. So much more than not. But the one convincing factor for me was a family, a husband, a wife, brother and sister Hall, sister Michelle Hall. There was something, there was a quality about those three people that gripped me. They never took me out to eat dinner. 
They never gave me a ride home or invited me over to their home. They never picked me up and said, let's hang. Let's go hang out. They never did that. They would greet me at church, but that was it. But when I watched them, see, you don't realize how many people are watching you. You may be the only Bible that some people will get a glance of or a glimpse of. And this family was that Bible for me that time. I was in the Valley of Decision for eight or nine months, going to church off and on, feeling the drawing power, but couldn't make up my mind. And one day I looked at them and I said, you know what? You've been watching them a long time. There's something they have that you know you want. They were the convincing factor that teeter totted me over into the kingdom of God with all my doubts, telling the Lord, I, I'm not even convinced he's real. I'm not convinced Jesus is real. Didn't matter. God accepted me based on my little mustard seed faith. He, he, he just allowed me in. And then after he allowed me in, then he built up my faith to believe all the things I wasn't convinced of on the day I got saved. But I'm telling you, God will use the most unlikely sources to convince many to come into the fold. Are you being used of God? Are you a convincing source or do people have to wade through your attitudes to figure out if they really want this or not? Do they have to uh, tiptoe around your temperament? Do they have to tiptoe around your anger, your, your spurts of, of anger, your outburst of disrespect? Do they have to get around all that to filter through to get to Jesus? Are you an obstacle course? Woo! Imagine that. See, when you operate in the gifts of the Lord, they have to be the gifts he gave you. You can't just pick and choose and say, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It's not a smorgasbord experience. God's giftings and calling are without repentance, not your gifting. See, a lot of us call ourselves the things God didn't call us to. That's why you got to fast, you got to pray, you got to have God lead you to scripture. You got to ask for all kind of confirmation. He will do it. But you have to make sure by seeking him about the gifts he gives. All right, now I'm about done. We're going to finish with 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Oh, here it is right here. <laughs> All right, now, and I'm going to read starting with verse one. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Have you ever watched a married couple? It's Pat's two cents now. Have you ever watched a married couple? They just, you know, the end of the wedding, they come out of the church and they're throwing stuff all over them and they, they're heading down to the limousine and they get in. And as the limousine takes off, you hear all this clang, man, 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 man. A whole bunch of people got together and tied a bunch of empty cans to the back of the car. You know why those cans make so much noise? Because they are empty. And you will find some of the church people that do the most talking, that do the most prophet lying. Yeah, I said prophet lying, not prophesying. That do the most prophet lying and test lying. They're the ones. I'm telling you, sometimes you got to stay clear from some of them because empty cans, they're the ones that make a lot of noise. They tell you how much they give. They tell you how often they give. They tell you how much they serve the Lord. They tell you how much they sacrifice for the Lord. They tell you how they bore the heat in the heat of the day. How they did this and did that and, and, and nobody thanked them. And how they, they serve the Lord no matter what. I'm for the Lord. I will never turn. See, never say never. 
Because, you know, the devil's got some trick bags for you, baby. You haven't even come close to. Never have that much faith in yourself. Because that faith will have you tripping over and falling flat on your face. All right. So knowing that whatever you do, it has to be out of love. You cannot be, you, you know, there are people in the church who notice they're the first ones. Uh, excuse me. Uh, we don't do that in church. Empty cans make a lot of noise. Uh, no, you're not supposed to do that. Why are you doing this over here? You need to be over there doing that like that. Let me show you how to do it. Mean, you will find the loudest, the most pushy. <laughs> I know I'm a loud mouth, so, you know, that's, that's for me being in New York. But I have to watch myself and make sure I'm not talking too much because there are times that we can all fall into that pushiness and we can push people away from God with our enthusiasm. What part of it is us and what part is being driven by God's Holy Spirit? Always be mindful of that and prayerful because we all fall short, baby. And while we're falling short, we can be tripping other people up with our mess. All right, let's go to verse three. And though I bestow all my goods. Oh no, I got to read verse two, don't I? And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. That's deep. And though I bestow all my goods, to feed the poor. And though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Now, this is what love does. Charity is love. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, not pushy. Is not puffed up, not egocentric, arrogant, and, and, and full of pride. Does not behave itself unseemly. Go on, you know, blow you up in public. You know, let me tell you a little something about yourself, girlfriend. Uh, seeketh not her own. Or oh, my way or the highway, baby, is not easily provoked. What you say? <laughs> Thinketh no evil. Oh, I know what you think you do, and you think you better than I am. Thinketh no evil. You see... That's a lot of the mess you see in churches that you see in church people, whether they're in the church or not, whether they're on the job place or whether they're at the store or at the garage or working with their family or at a business. The bottom line is you will find these characteristics because we are steadily battling our flesh, but we need to be battling our flesh, not cohabiting with it. I may be stuck with me, but I don't have to allow myself any liberties. You hear what I'm saying? Freedom comes with obeying God, not obeying my flesh. When you obey your flesh, baby, you are contaminating the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And you are blocking other people's paths. When he says, lift up a highway. Yeah. We ain't lifting up a highway, baby. We're lifting up a blockade when we allow our flesh to reign. Amen? All right. So let's ask God to help us get control of our tongue, our attitude, and our flesh so that we will be one that someone else looks at like I looked at those three Hall family members and say, they got something I want. Not You don't want them to look at you and say, well, if that's what being a Christian is, I'm better off being a sinner. No, thank you, baby. You don't want that. So be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you talk to people. Be careful how you bring words of correction. Be careful how you, the, the level of respect you show. Because everybody counts. I don't care if you think they're an idiot. They count, baby. And they may be an idiot at your level, 
from your perspective, but in other areas that you don't even know, that you can't even touch with a 10-foot pole, that same idiot might be a genius. Watch how you look down on people and think highly of yourself. Be careful with all of that, and you'll be all right. Amen? <laughs>